right, what's going on everybody? My name is Blood Thunder. I'm gonna be your runner for the next hour or so, hopefully a little less than that. But we're gonna be doing it the Penumbra Trilogy, which you guys have probably seen on the schedule. And if you don't know what that means, if you didn't hear it in the interview, uh, it's just three games done back to back to back. So as soon as we finish the first game, we're gonna close it out and go immediately into the second. We have Penumbra Overture, which we're starting with, the first in the series, Penumbra Black Plague, and Penumbra Requiem. You also do not know what Penumbra is, as many people seem to not know for whatever reason. It's a very underrated game. This is the series that Frictional Games, who's known for Amnesia the Dark Descent and Soma and Rebirth and all those great games. This is the series that they started with. This is actually started as a tech demo just to show off the in-house engine that they made, the HPL engine. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very broken, which is why we can do three games in, in under an hour. And uh, we're going to have some fun with it. So going to try to keep you guys informed on what the story is as we go, but we're going to be skipping a lot of content, so we're going to be moving very, very fast. Uh, just to set the stage real quick, we play as Philip. We are essentially looking for our father, who we have believed to have been dead for some time. We get a, a strange letter from him years after saying, hey, here's all these clues, come find me, um, kind of thing. And that's where we start. So we're going to choose our difficulty. We're going to play on easy. Uh, we'll go over the difficulty as we go. We'll go over how the games evolve as we go as well. Uh, difficulty doesn't matter at all. There is combat in this game, but we're not going to see any of that as you normally do in speedruns. Uh, so we're just going to pick easy for one particular reason, which we'll get to. And time's going to start as soon as we skip this cutscene. And we're off. So immediately we're going to skip another cutscene, pick up a whole bunch of stuff, open the inventory, get our handy dandy glow stick. There are some uh, some dogs in the game that we meet, but we cannot pet them. So we're gonna take the time to pet my cat Thor. A little, a little scratch. All right, and now we have to go. So we're getting off the boat. We are arriving in at Northern Greenland. Doing some crazy jumps, but uh, essentially our father's message has led us here. And we're gonna find this abandoned mine, essentially. Um. But we are also playing Penumbra Overture on the unpatched version of the game, which allows us to do this crazy thing known as inventory jumping, which you saw me do there and see me do many other times. I gotta line this up. E, move this out of the doorway. Pretty much anything you see me doing is not intended. Uh, even if it looks intended, it is not, I assure you. Wait for this. Uh, anytime we get to a cutscene, we can just save load past it. Uh, and anytime I'm moving around, moving diagonally or strafe moving is the fastest. Adding a jump on top of that is even faster. And then we'll go over inventory jumping once we get out of this part of the game. So we're gonna pick up a handy dandy lighter and we're gonna try to clip out of bounds. This one's a little bit tricky. This rock is uh, not the best for this, but we'll see. We also have our handy dandy glow stick. Gotta have that for the dark spookiness. This is supposed to be a horror game, but uh, not really going to see too much of that. Oh, we can just slip here. Just a tad bit in. Got plenty of time, but I don't want to spend it all right here. Wiggle, wiggle. Philip needs to go on a diet. There we go. All right. So now we're out. We can do another inventory jump, get over all of the stuff. Coming over here to grab lighter fluid. And we don't have access to rotating props in this. We will gain access to that in Black Plague and Requiem. Uh, so we have to kind of some weird maneuvers to get props to line up the way we want. And while we're jumping, we can use our inventory to... Let's go ahead and uh, combine those two items. So inventory jumping is a feature of the game. Definitely not a bug at all. Definitely wasn't patched out of the game for any reason. Uh, hey, there's Stumps McKenzie, our friendly little dog but uh, yeah. if you open your inventory after jumping on the unpatched version of the game you can gain either really really tall heights or really long distances depending on when you open it I'm gonna grab this through the chest the key to that chest is in the same room but it's a little slow to pick it up so we just don't but yeah um, because jumping is faster than walking uh, anytime we can extend our jump to go further, that's going to be even faster. Also allows us to do some crazy things. And we're going to be doing a lot of clips. Uh, the strats through the games are kind of similar. A lot of the same mechanics apply across the board. But we just do them in, in different ways and uh, 
you know, once we get into Black Plague and Requiem, you'll see that. We need to make an explosive here. We're gathering all the stuff we need for a fuse. Enter the code. Pick up uh, a wick. We'll get our pickaxe. So there is combat in this game, and the fact that you can have a hammer that we skipped earlier, and this pickaxe. Uh, a lot of people did not like this, so they ended up taking it out of the future the future games. Uh, but it allows some, for some really cool stuff. As I mentioned before the run, this was started as like a tech demo for the HPL engine, which is named after HPL Lovecraft, of course. Uh, so the combat really shows off like the physics puzzles that you need to solve. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that the run actually doesn't ever touch on because we just skip over huge chunks of the game. It's uh, definitely an underrated series. If you haven't already played it, this will absolutely not ruin the game for you. You'll play it and you'll be like, I didn't see any of this. So uh, the reason we play on easy difficulty instead of hard or normal, which don't really matter, is for this reason right here. <laughs> We're going to stand on this very safe barrel. And instead of dying like you usually would, uh, easy allows you to survive it and go right into the load screen. And we're on to the next section of the game. We're going to meet our friend here very soon. But before we do that, we need to do a very cool trick. We're going to do a save load to get rid of the screen shake. So we can't uh, we can't rotate props. So we kind of have to just hope this lands up the way we want it to. Hope it doesn't roll away. And whoop. Oh. Also, if you jump and you spam your spacebar, whatever your jump key is, you can go a little bit further, which comes into play uh, in Black Plague and Requiem because we don't have an inventory jumping. But here's our friend Red. This is the typical video game character that's like, hey, I have the answers that you seek. Uh, you know, come find me and I can tell you all that stuff. Super trustworthy guy. And one of my favorites in the series. Grab the saw, which we way, need later on. You can call me Red. It's not my name, you understand, but but I am sure you will agree. It is a name rather similar to a cardigan. Fetching when one correct. Normally you would use the saw to open this, but there's a little cutscene involved, so we're just gonna not do that. Uh, and these games are really built on having hub sections. So you go to one main area and then it branches off into different sections you can visit, and you're supposed to find all the things you need to progress. Uh you know, because we're breaking the game, we just immediately go to where we need to and click past stuff. Uh, so we don't see a lot of those hub areas. Like here, you're supposed to activate this drill and it's going to drill through three walls to let you go through the tunnel. But uh, yeah, all we need is this nice box. We're going to line it up, wedge yourself in. And like that, we're past two walls. We need to go past the third there. There we go. There's our magic door. So not only are there spooky dogs in this game, there are other spooky animals. Because, you know, it's got to be spooky in some regard. So we're going to meet our second friend. And he's a little bit bigger. Hope you guys in chat aren't too scared yet. Oh, it's coming for us. So we're just going to go right past them. And make our way over here. see my least favorite of the enemies in this game, the spooky spiders. Actually, we didn't see one this time. They were just staying away. Nice. All right, so we're going to open the door, and then we got to clip back. It's a little dangerous. <laughs> that was the death. Totally intentional. Try it again. There we go. It is possible to clip past this door, but the, the, the setup's not particularly great. If you do it wrong, you actually crash the game. Uh, which is just not a good idea. Uh, so we're just going to play it safe. Yeah, the GDQ, we're not going for records here. We're just having a bunch of fun because we're raising tons of money for charity, which is crazy. When you come over here to pick up two items, we get a screwdriver and a bolt cutter. I'm going to try to do this. Give it a couple tries here. So we're using this box to clip, but we're going to combine it with an inventory jump. Uh, if we can get the height here. It's a little bit tricky. Now we can always run. There we go. So do a little inventory management. Try to not fall through the map. Hey, not too bad. We're also going to set up another trick. You do move slowly whenever you hold an item. So normally if you're trying to get something in position, you like kind of juggle it. 
Oh, that has a tendency to break if you throw it around, so we just don't. I'm gonna run past some spooky spider eggs. Oh, get me out of here. <laughs> People are always like, hey, you're glitching past everything. There's no way this game's still scary. The spiders are still terrifying to me. Uh, so I don't know what they're on about. So we're gonna save a load past another screen shake. These aren't really necessary, it just makes it a little nicer. We need this blank note that's going to reveal the door code that we need, even though it's the same every single time. The door code doesn't become uh, usable until you actually go and get the code, which is the reason this runs over 10 minutes. So we're going to set this up, hopefully, do another inventory jump here. First try, easy as that. Here, enter the code. Normally this area has a steam puzzle, uh, where like steam comes up from the floor and you have to dodge it and do all this walking, which sounds real slow. But we're gonna try to skip past that. Sometimes you get lucky and get a really nice clip here. Um, sometimes you don't, we'll see. Right onto the steam grid, we can just jump over it from there. Not too bad. It's out of my way. So yeah, red's still kind of giving us uh, some flavor dialogue as we run through here, being the bestest of pals. And the story at this point is kind of that this whole area is set up as a research facility by... Uh, at this point in time, we're not supposed to actually know who they are, uh, I'm pretty sure. But it is a ancient secret organization, kind of like the Illuminati, uh, that came here to research some ancient stuff. <laughs> Basically, we'll touch more on it in Black Plague, because that's when it becomes, uh, important. But hey, we got the door code. We can go back. Some inventory jumps. And we're off to the races. So this is going to end the second hub, uh, essentially, and we're going to go into the last one. So we're already really close to the end of Overture, which is uh, pretty crazy to think about. That, you know, normally this game would take five, six hours maybe. Uh, you know, maybe a little longer if you're scared of everything, which is totally understandable. Run back down here where we were before. Enter the code. All right. So this is the last section before we come face to face with Red, or as I should say, normally you'd come face to face with Red. Unfortunately, we will not see him, uh, but we will make our way back around to him eventually. Spoilers. This is another very spooky part of the game. Um, not because it's actually spooky, but because just you have a tendency to die here. Uh, this frozen lake you need to cross, but as you try to cross it, it breaks into pieces. And even with inventory jumping, sometimes you just fall right in. I think today we might be fine. Gonna grab the scroll bar. We're gonna skip this cutscene just because we can. Make it a little bit faster. All right, we got that so we can go back. It's also really nice that you can just do some inventory management. Makes it very, very handy. You can also see there's a health bar and like battery for the flashlight, uh, which never come into play, really. But if you if you actually mess with the monsters and stuff, then it would. But we don't have time for all of that. So as we get closer to red, we're gonna find out more about uh, what's going on down here. Basically, the ancient. Uh, civilization, which uh, kind of founded the soul place, is known as the Archaic, or the Archaic Elevated Cast, I think is their full title. Um, so they're basically a secret society that's just looking for like ancient relics and knowledge and all that good stuff. Uh, so this is Red's room, and they set up not only this abandoned mine, but a shelter, which is where Red is. Uh, here, we're gonna make our way to his room. It's very treacherous. I don't know how they set all this up, but they did. And he's holding the key to going into the shelter itself. Uh, like, so we were never ever gonna actually mess with Red. We're not gonna get the key from him, so we need to clip out. And this is his room down here. Red's over where that red beam is, uh, which just looks scary. A big inventory jump. Hope to make it. Ooh, so close. Not a first try. That's fine. Get it on the second one. There we go. All 
All right. I'll come in here. Good. Turn all of this stuff off. Go back out. And now, because this door is locked, this is the key that Red would normally give us to come into his room. Uh, we need to clip back out, so we're just going to do this. And if you ever, like, fall into the void or clip out of the map, you usually just can't move and you just are, are stuck there forever. So now we're into the shelter. And we're going to go down the spooky hallway. And the time for the first game is going to end. But like I said, we're going to go right into the second one. There's a spooky man who is just standing there. So he's going to knock us out. And that ends Overture. So we're just going to back out real quick. Launch Black Plague. Very quick. Keeping the timer rolling. Like that. Going right into it. So once again, we're playing on easy. Much like Overture. That doesn't really matter. Uh, there is, uh, once again, one spot where it does come into play. There's no combat in this. Um, and what I did right there is a save load to get past the cutscene, and then a save load will also kill your momentum. So I was going to clip out of the map in the wrong fashion there. I was going to go out into the void. So by reloading that save I made right after clipping through, I actually just drop where I need to be. So we're picking up some stuff, and now the spooky people are coming after me. So this is actually not the archaic. This is what's known as the infected, which we'll learn about here in a second. Pick up the glow stick. Normally runners don't pick this up. The game's a little dark to make it nicer for everyone watching. Pick it up. Also, the glow stick is really fun to just wiggle around. <laughs> Whenever you get scared or bored, you can just wiggle it, and, you know, get a little smile on your face, and you're good to go. Top of the events, typical stuff that you do. We're going to completely bypass the entire puzzle for this section by using this pipe. Uh, for whatever reason, if you put something on top of this pipe that has steam coming out of it, you just completely negate the fact that steam does damage. And you can pass. No idea why that works, but it does. So the reason we pick this stuff up is so that we can get some blood off of this guy. So that we can open the door to the cafeteria. And this has one of my favorite speedrun tricks of all time. Not just the run. We're going to stand right here. And rotate the chair that we can now move freely. Bring it in close. Tap herself on the head and bam. We're through to the next map. The reason that works is because there is a trigger that loads in the next map underneath the floor. And normally you have to go and access uh, the back room and you go down the ladder and end there. But by hitting yourself on the head, you push yourself low enough to actually just hit the, the load zone that you need. And <laughs> it's so quick and easy. Anybody could do it. Now we're gonna meet uh, the equivalent to Red in the first game. This is Dr. Annabelle Swanson. Once again, she's like, hey, you're infected now. Uh, because that happened when we were in the sewer, by the way. You need to come save me, and I can help you. I'm going to try to do... Ooh, did I get it? First try? Maybe? Um, so we'll talk about Clarence here in a second. But the reason I just went back into that room and, and into this one again is because usually there is a moment when you meet Clarence where he kind of takes control of your body and makes you crouch and look all over the place, but we can skip that by simply... Uh, having that activate when we're going through a load screen. So we don't have to deal with that and we can just do everything we need to. So we pick up our saw. Also, we lost all of our items when we got knocked out. So we have to pick everything back up. Uh, and Clarence is going to be our friend for a while. This is going to be a voice in our head. Put back out. And yeah, so when we were in the sewer, we got infected or at some point in the game, we got infected. Uh, and he is supposed to be part of a hive mind known as the Turn Gate. But instead of actually, like, becoming part of the hive mind, he's just, like, now stuck in our head. So he's just kind of along for the ride. Um, it's pretty cool. We're gonna line this up. We need to clip this through, right through the door. Definitely fit through that gap. Don't ask any questions about it. Now we're going to go through ourselves. So the reason we do that is because we need to clip back here eventually, and there's no props in this hallway. So the only way back is to bring something with us. There's been multiple uh, ways to do that over the years, which is really interesting. There was a brick at one point. There is a milk jug. Rip the milk jug. Uh, but yeah, we're coming into the infirmary to pick up this head. Once again, don't ask questions. It's completely natural. We can bring this with us. And now we need to go back. Ooh, that was a really clean clip. Yeah, this gives us some nice dialogue as we go, and we're going to clip through. 
So now damage comes into play, and difficulty comes into play, I should say, uh, in this part. So normally, you need to find a gas mask, which I don't even remember where that is, honestly, uh, to get through this. But if you're playing on easy, you have enough health to just tank the damage and go through. So that's the reason for that. And Requiem itself will actually not have a difficulty at all. Um, that's one of the things you see change throughout the series. So you also notice I'm not inventory jumping. As I said, that was taken out. Uh, it was actually patched out in Overture. Uh, so definitely not going to be in this game. So we need two items to uh, get past this this hub. I don't even know how to use computers. Uh, our warm friend's back. A little boss fight. But we need to collect a hand and a head so I can get past the scanner. Give him a little shock. And he just conveniently has a hand for us. Surprise, surprise, because that's what giant worms tend to eat, I guess. So now we can make our way back and get our way out of this first hub section. Hope you guys are keeping up with the story. Uh, there will be a quiz later, so uh, if you haven't already st started taking notes, Sorry to tell you that. So Clarence also likes to play pranks on us because he's just that kind of guy. There's supposed to be a door here, but uh, he just makes it disappear. So we're going to run back and he's like, oh, hey, now the door's back. We use the stuff and uh, move on. Nice little hidden room behind the bookcase. That's going to allow us to keep on moving. We're actually trying to make our way to the surface so that we can get to a different section of this entire facility, which is where Amabel Swanson is. Um, we'll talk about her again in just a moment. But first, we're going to do some object hovering. We did this briefly in the sewers, and this tech does exist in Overture, but because we have inventory jumping, it's never needed. Uh, but yeah, you can basically just pick up any item you want and spam jump and uh, you know, just fly up into the sky. You're going to be seeing this a lot in Requiem. So any future conversations we have to have of Amabel after the first one, we can just completely skip. We don't need to actually talk to her. She knows we're coming. We'll get there eventually. What's up? We're going to try to give this trick a few times, a few attempts here. It's pretty fun. It looks pretty cool, but it's not always the nicest. Let's see. Give it uh, one or two more. There we go. And not. A good look at it. Alright, we're just going to take the easy way across. You can just pick up any item you want, pretty much, and just spam jump, and you get across. Easy as that. So the gold kind of does damage to you. It's never really important. Uh, but we're going to blow up this barrel, because we need access to this facility. We need our handy dandy lighter. So notice I'm not really doing as much inventory management as I was in Overture, mainly because we can't inventory jump, so it, you don't want to be in your inventory as you're running. It's just not going to work. Uh, you're just going to stand in place. Okay, so just going to do it as you can. So this is where Amabel Swanson is. Unfortunately for her, we never actually see her. We never save her, uh, which is probably better for her. Uh, no spoilers for the story of the game, but... Uh, yeah, she doesn't want to see us. This is basically how it's going to go. So we're going to set this up for later. So we're going to come back here and the store is going to be locked. Doesn't want to be my friend. But now we're going to go into the chem lab, which is very infamous in terms of speedrunning of a number game, especially Black Plague. This for a long time was just a really, really tough split to do. Um, and it still somewhat is. So one thing we picked up along the way were some painkillers, so we can kind of just deal with that. We're going to move this barrel out of the way, and we're going to hope that this is kind of me. So we're going to set this up. We're going to try to bypass a large section of puzzles. There's like three different puzzles here. And we just bypassed all of them, like that. <laughs> it's a really nice setup that someone found. I don't remember who it is, but whoever did, thank you. That is awesome. Um, now here's a crane game, everyone's favorite type of game. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to play it because we all know they're giant scams and the easiest way to get your prize is just to clip inside and then because we're in here, we need to clip out. 
just like that. Pick up our prize. And now the infected are coming after us. So the archaic that we talked about before. Uh, did I save? We might have to do some of that again. All right, now we're good. I'm a professional at this. I've done this before a couple of times. It's a very small time saver, but I like going for it. So we're going to do it. There we go. Just fly across the world. Yeah, the archaic who we talked about before as being a secret society. Uh, basically found this place and found what was the turn gate, which was the hive mines. Um, and in doing so, they kind of un unleashed a virus, which became the infected, which is the scary monsters walking around. Um, like this guy. Spooky, spooky people. And uh, we're actually going to meet the turn gate here soon. Yeah, they didn't want to cooperate. All right to run around the long way so that door becomes locked once you do the chem lab section of the game uh, once we get over here clarence is gonna be prankster once again he's like hey you didn't actually make it that far you gotta run back <laughs> good old classic prank so we're gonna pick up some supplies here hidden around the area move the milk out of the way non-refrigerated milk So what we're doing at the moment, the goal that we're trying to do is to get Clarence out of our head, get him out of our body. So there's a body here. And the thing that we picked up that we're now going to keybind along the way. Gonna dump all these chemicals, as you do into this giant machine, into the secret code. And this will now remove him from our body and put it into the body that's over here. He's gonna come back to life. And um, anytime anyone asks me about the number series, I say that this game and the series takes a turn. This is the moment where it takes that turn. Uh, and things get a little weird. And yeah. <laughs> so our cutscenes here, which we've been skipping most of them, but if you skip these, you tend to soft lock the game. So we're just not doing that. Uh, also, this door is open, which is pretty rare. That's really cool to see. We're in a nice little cutscene where now a whole bunch of infected are going to show up. And that's Clarence chasing after us. Uh, the turn gate's not happy with Clarence because he is now not part of the hive mind. He is just on his own. You know, he has his own personality. He has his own body. So they kind of just take care of him. At the end, this one was more human than he would have been. Yeah, this is the, <laughs> this is the twist. The thing talking right now is the turn gate. The hive mind itself. So to go back to Overture for a brief moment in time, uh, we started Overture looking for our father, who had passed away many years ago. Uh, it turns out that at some point in time, Howard had actually come here and been a part of like the research facility, and he found out about the turn gate and communicated with it. But in doing so, it drove him so crazy that he took his own life and sent the message, uh, basically hoping that Philip would show up and just destroy all the research, and no one would ever know about this. But we inadvertently followed in his footsteps, and now we are in the trial section of the game. We have a little bit of time uh, to just kind of stand around and do nothing as it talks to us. If there's a good donation to read, that would be an excellent time. There's actually an excellent donation to read. I have $20 from Thorcat. They say, happy birthday, Blood Thunder, and great speedrunner. Happy birthday, BT. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, my, my birthday was on the 5th, so this is a great way to cap the end of my night. Uh, so I appreciate everyone being here, showing up, and uh, I realize that donation's probably from my mom and dad, who are staying up. Super late to watch this, so shout outs to them, much love. Yeah. Once again, thank you all for tuning in, checking out Penumbra. If you do like this run, I do this quite a bit over on my actual channel. We also do fictional games anthology runs, which this is a part of. We add in Amnesia and Soma and all that good stuff. Sometimes we add in some custom maps and stuff like that, like Penumbra Necrolog, which is a fan-made DLC, uh, which just continues it and is a fantastic 
time. If you like the story of Penumbra, check out Penumbra Necrolog on Steam. It is free. But uh, we're going to do a cool trick where we spam jump and interact on this door. Um, and we're going to get past the first trial. We're not going to interact with it in any way. These trials are to test uh, us as a person because the turn gates like humanity as a whole is destructive and evil and just pure chaos. But people themselves can be uh, better. So it's giving us a couple tests. That was to test cooperation, which we absolutely failed, but it thinks we did. So I guess that's a win. Uh, this one I think is to show mercy. We're supposed to let the infected live. And then the next one's going to test our self-sacrifice. Uh, so we're going to jump over here. Jump off the wall. You can do another trick like spamming interact on the door instead of um, or examine on the door instead of interact. But it's a little bit more difficult. So we're just going to take a nice, nice stroll around the area. So we passed that with flying colors. And now we're going into the third trial. Yeah, there's not really anything you can do here. There's some fun stuff. You can like climb up these walls. If you jump off, you just respawn back. It's kind of fun to mess with, but also a very strange part of the game. So anytime you're in like these white screens or fading in, um, you can actually move. So there I was holding forward the whole time. And when we go back into the actual map, I'm going to be holding right just to get some places further. So we pass all the tests. Um, and turn gate's like, hey, you know, you're actually an, a pretty cool person, which, you know, I, I like to think I'm a pretty cool person. But now they're going to give you kind of the same ultimatum they gave Howard. Like, you know, you should go and tell people to destroy this so that no one can ever find us. Uh, and all that stuff, or whatever else you want to do with this information. <laughs> so you're going to hold right. This clip is a little hard to set up. Clip in. Okay. So we're going to do what's known as double clicking here. We're going to attempt to at least. It's a little difficult. But we're going to try to left click interact and right click examine. Um, two different things in this room. There's normally four things you need to look at for this to let you go further. But if you double click or interact twice with the same thing before it disappears, uh, a lot of times you can just bypass it a little faster. So we're going to interact with the computer. And that is the end of Black Plague. We'll talk about the story here in just a second. We're going to launch Requiem and get into it. Uh, we're not going to start from a new game. We're going to start from a save file because there's a minute long cutscene that we actually can't skip. Uh, so we just load a, a a uh, setup like that. Uh, but yeah, this game is like, why are we now suddenly in a tomb? Uh, also, this is by far one of the hardest tricks in the entire trilogy. You got a, a really tough jump there. Um, so at the end of Black Plague, we send an email, and it's actually revealed, if you pay attention to the, the game and the story, which we didn't, that the whole game was actually like a flashback. Um, where we were writing an email about our adventure and the journey that we took through that area in the research. Uh, so we were sending an email to someone. I don't remember if it's a friend or a colleague or, or who it is, but like basically, hey, come and, uh, come and deal with this because I failed. Kind of repeating the cycle. Uh, and then the start of Requiem is right after that. A, Infected shows up and hits us in the head with an item and knocks us out. And now we are kind of back in our own head, kind of like the trials, but in a completely different way. Here. So Requiem gets a little bit of hate because it's not really a horror game anymore. It's more of a, an expansion, honestly. It's like a standalone expansion for Black Plague. Just gonna, ooh. We might need to reload an extra save. Okay. Because they never got to make a proper third game in the trilogy. They just put out this nine level expansion that has a lot of physics based puzzles to show off more of the engine and kind of wrap up loose ends in terms of the story. So there's not a whole lot. And this is why we hear like Red come back. Um, a lot of parts from 
Overture and Black Plague kind of show up again because once it's in our minds, anything can happen. And every puzzle that we go through has certain collectibles or keys that we need to find. And as we go, you get more and more keys per level. Um, anytime you see an orange flash like this, it is a save happening. Whether it's a quick save or whatever. Uh, you, there's also like no items that we pick up for our inventory. But this run's going to involve a lot of um, big jumps, so we're just going to spam jump the whole time. We can't do inventory jumps like Overture. Once again, that was patched out. We also can't really clip past a whole lot of content because we need to grab the different keys. So there's some big jumps there to just get past the cycle. But we're going to do a lot of object hovering and some clipping here and there. We're also doing a very cool trick at the start of every level, um, which allows us to skip the intro cutscene by just holding save. And then once we get to the map, we just quick load. So this isn't really a strat that we do, but I just like showing it off because you take this catch up and it explodes for whatever reason. <laughs> just like showing that off. Why not? We have some time. These runs are going pretty well. Let's uh, not take things too seriously here. Pick up another key. Level exit open. Level exit We're just going to hover our way through the map. Bring this box with us. There's no difficulty in this, mainly because it's a puzzle game. There's no monsters to deal with. There's no combat. Uh, there's not really too much horror involved. There are some moments of it here and there, but it's, it's really about just solving the puzzles and the platforming, um, which I still think is pretty cool. It makes for a cool run. And once you run all of them together, you kind of realize that you don't encounter too many monsters anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is one of my favorite tricks, along with the mess hall skip in Black Plague. So we're going to clip out of bounds, which normally would just be void. But because this map involves a lot of water, there's actually just water out of bounds. And we're going to swim through the floor like a shark, pick up the key, and then we're going to pop up through the floor, which is going to send us flying into the sky. And now we can do a cool trick if we can land here. Um, if you're standing whenever you load a save, you can just jump regardless if you're on the ground or not. So once we made that save in the air, we needed to be on solid ground when we loaded it so that we could jump over to the platform and grab the key. And that was really nice. Usually it doesn't treat me that well, so that's cool to see. And this map is going to show off something that we haven't seen so far. We kind of abuse a mechanic that's been hidden away. Uh, Frictional games kind of realize that their games are a little bit buggy here and there. So if an item happens to clip through the floor or a wall or something and end up in the void where you can't get it, it actually has a proper respawn point, which is right here uh, for this map. And as I mentioned before, in one of the games at some point, I'm sure, maybe I didn't mention, uh, carrying items is really slow and compared to just running around and jumping. So instead of bringing this item with us all the way back, we're just going to clip it through the floor and it's going to respawn back at that point. It's going to be faster than carrying it. So we're going to see a flash of white, which means it just respawns. We do that door trick that we saw in Black Plague. Grab ourselves a battery. We don't need to clip back because there's just conveniently a little switch that opens the door there. So here's our fuse, just like that. Sometimes these items do just actually clip through the floor here. Hopefully they are going to be kind. Ooh. Oh, well, I clipped through a wall. That's not quite what you want to see. <laughs> uh, can we get this back? We might. Ooh. Sometimes this is what speedrunning is about. It's not about doing things perfectly. It's recovering from situations like your pipe getting stuck in a wall. Come on. You can do it. We all believe in you. All right, you know what? My belief is shattered. Let's go back a step or two. Shouldn't be too far back. A 
Let's just pretend like none of that even happened. And in Philip's head, it, I guess, didn't. So, let's show this off again. These barrels are actually really annoying with the clip width because these handles can have collision. Uh, not can have, they actually do have collision. And depending on how that's rotated, can really affect how you clip through. Alright. Put that back through. I just like doing this door trick, throwing it off. It's pretty fun. Alright, place the battery over here. And hopefully, this time, everything behaves the way it should. Which, uh, rule one for speedrunning is never talk about what you're about to do because it will just inadvertently go wrong every single time. Uh, it's just a curse. So. I'm going to turn on the generators here. Turn on the generators here. <laughs> oh, man. And the fuse is going to break, which is why we need that. So turning all this on so we have power back in this facility. Uh, so we can open up a box which has one of the keys that we actually need to go call in. The archaic demand. All of that is totally needed. And the archaic demands that we continue on with the run now. So we're going to go up here. We called in a supply drop. And instead of taking it back to that generator, if we just slam it on the ground here, we can actually just break it on our own. Because we're just that strong, you know. And that will give us enough to go on to the next map. This map is really cool and the puzzles that you have to solve, but we're not going to do any of the puzzles that we need to solve. Instead, we're going to uh, take a really big shortcut. Just gonna move this so we can't pick up this ball like we can uh, many of the other props it's actually really really heavy we can push it though and the whole idea behind this map is to uh, take it down this big winding path and you have to solve these puzzles to open gates to let it go down further because it needs to get to the bottom um we also need to go pick up a whole bunch of keys before we do anything else so again, if any of this, for whatever reason, seems to be the intended strat, you're like, oh, that seems like it could be the thing. It's not. Um, we're not doing anything the way you're supposed to. And I think our handy dandy box. Down to the bottom. The reason we're doing this is because we need to pick up our magic carpet. If you didn't know, this game actually inspired uh, the movie Aladdin. And take our magic carpet. And uh, I'm going to show you all the world. It is a really scary world <laughs> where magic carpets uh, are not your friends. So some items are definitely a lot better for object hovering than others. Boxes and barrels are really, really nice. Things like this magic carpet are really not nice. But we need this to make a little ramp. So like I said, we can't pick this up, but what we can do is just push this over the edge. And now it's conveniently down at the bottom where we need it to go. Shortcutting the entire map. And that's going to give us our last key. Now we can leave. At this point, you're wondering what's going on in the story. Yet again, uh, this is still all just taking place in Philip's minds. That's kind of just how the game ends uh, until we get to the very last map, at least. I'm going to clip through here. The map likes to shake a whole bunch when you're trying to do this, which makes it a little bit more annoying to set up. But we should be fine. There we go. So I'm actually not going to do a save load at the start of this level because we're going to uh, be doing a very annoying object hover. I just mentioned some props are not as nice to you when you go to do these things, and this is one of them. Um, and while you can save load past the cutscene, anytime there's movement applied to your uh, 
your character, whether it's moving around, crouching, uh, just the way you're looking, that still gets applied. So if you're trying to do this object hover after skipping the cutscene, you can just really get thrown off easily. So it's better just to not do it. And a nice little video game reference over here. You guys like video games, all right? Come all the way up here to grab a key, and then we're gonna lie down. We. Right. Doing some basic math. Just taking this gear with us everywhere we go. We're gonna actually use this to jam open the door here. So we can peek inside and move this box. And now we have everything we need to leave the level. But we have to do another sketchy object over here. And this will complete map 7, so we have two maps left of the series. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's pretty rare to die from just fall damage, uh, so that's cool. I won't say it's never happened before. Sorry for anyone that's playing GDQ Bingo. That's definitely happened before. It's just kind of rare to see. So, you know, of course it's going to show an appearance at a GDQ. These, uh, these props are not always the nicest thing to work with. But once we get past this, we should be essentially home free. All right, I'm going to take this one instead. This one's my friend. Oh yeah, this one's much nicer. So just gonna climb up, get past this exit. Uh, the gears are actually supposed to be used in the puzzle to get rid of that laser, but yeah, it's super slow. We're not doing it. This is a cutscene you need to make sure you absolutely skip because it is a really long one, and you're gonna notice here when I was mentioning about the camera movements. So yeah, the game's just gonna force me to look in certain directions as we Try to get over to where we need to go, which makes it a little annoying, but since I've played this game a couple of times before, we can be fine. We're just going to wait here because uh, anything past this point is really, really hard to do. You know, when you can't see anything and you're being forced to crouch and all that good stuff. Let's have control again. Uh, the reason we came down here is to grab a barrel so we can uh, get past another puzzle. We actually need three items to weigh down some pressure pads over here. We're going to weigh down one ourselves. Uh, we have a box right here as well. Cover the third. And we just need that barrel for the first. It's also going to let us object hover once we're done with this. That's going to open up this door. And surprise, surprise, there's another key in here. Okay. Sometimes you can grab that and um, right click, which would be like a throw. And you kind of just slam the lid down and it pops open. Uh, that time it does not want to work, so. From this point on, we're just going to object hover past everything, pick up our last key, and we're on to the final map, which... Uh, for anyone that hasn't seen Penumbra before, it's not really going to be familiar. But it is essentially the end of Overture as well. It kind of wraps back on itself. We're going to meet up with Red finally. Um, and he's going to offer us a choice. I'm going to grab the save because it is kind of scary to do this. Player, okay. your journey is almost at an end. Please don't leave me here alone. This is map nine, and this is the conclusion to Requiem. Do another save load. Going to do some more object hovering. And uh, yeah, meet up with our best buddy, Red. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the run so far. Once again, if you like these runs, you can uh, hop over my Twitch channel where I do these pretty regularly. We also do it as part of the Frictional Games Anthology, which adds in uh, the three amnesias, Soma, and sometimes we even throw in some other m games as well. Do a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, horror games, you guys may know me from Bioshock, Wolfenstein, Doom. We're on a whole bunch of different stuff. Learning some more after this as well. Keep on hopping. This box is going to be very kind to us this whole way through. 
we basically don't need anything else to solve this last puzzle. So we're gonna make our way over, grab key number two. Keys persisting in the environment, one. Okay. Still need our box. And then this is the part where it kind of wraps back in on going into the shelter. We never really saw this rock pile um, in Overture, but past this is where Red resides. So we're going to clip out of bounds, but we're going to do so in a way that we're standing on the razor thin edge. And now we're going to hop around. Ooh, scary. Uh, that was very clean. And now we're down here. Where this is where we went to the shelter. This is Red's room, which is now unlocked, so we can grab the last key. Be fancy and grab it through the doors. Uh, now we go meet Red, who's conveniently waiting in an incinerator. What a lovely guy. So he kind of offers you a choice. Um, there's like a secret ending that not, not many people know about. So we're going to click this here in just a second. That's how we end. But if you wait through all of Red's dialogue, uh, he does offer you the choice to go back. And this will put you on to... Well, spoilers. You know, if you want to find out, just go play the games yourself. So we're going to click this. And that's officially time for the entire trilogy. Uh, we're going to listen to the Red talk here a little bit. Wrap up the story. Once again, this right now is still all taking place in Philip's head. Um, we're just knocked out on the floor after the events of Black Plague. And that's kind of the way Philip's story ends. Um, so he took the choice with Red to join him in the incinerator, which is how the events of Overture ended. Uh, to get the key from Red... We have to essentially incinerate him because it's in his pocket and that's the only way to get it out. Um, is wrapping back on that moment, whether you hop in the incinerator like he did uh, or you back out from it. This is my favorite moment in any, <laughs> any run, the fire bacon. I don't know why I like this texture so much, but this always looks so tasty. I know fire shouldn't look tasty, but... This looks so good. Yeah, so here we, we finally get a, a brief moment of that's the computer at the end of Black Plague where we wrote the message to uh, to someone to, hey, come deal with the, the turn gate and all of this nonsense and hopefully destroy it. Uh, I think the message actually just says kill them, kill them all. And then that's Philip laying on the floor there. And that wraps up the Penumbra trilogy. Thank you all for having me. Uh, this was a great way to finish off my 28th birthday. Uh, I've been speedrunning for a, close to a decade now. I've run a whole bunch of different games, and it's always a blast to be able to show off games like this for GDQ. Um, so once again, if you do like these runs, you do like my commentary style, whatever, you can find me on YouTube. All my runs are up there. Uh, you can find me on Twitch. If you just want to find anything else, you can just go to bloodthunder.tv. I'm sure you guys are going to crash that site. But uh, yeah. if you're looking for any of my speedruns I've ever done, it's on there. Links available. And uh, if you have questions about this or really anything else, feel free to send them my way. I can point you in the right direction if you want to learn how to run these games. There's a pretty large community, especially in the French scene, uh, for Black Plague especially. But yeah, they're really fun. You guys should pick them up, play them casually. And shout outs to GDQ for having me back. Surprise, surprise, I'm not banned. I don't know why people tend to to think. I think we just have too much fun with these, which is why people think I'm banned. But we'll see you guys in the future and have a great rest of the GDQ.